So, it's December already, I'm resting at home right now and that means that it's time to sum up my 2021 season and to set up some goals for the next one. Yeah, I'm still planning to play next year and I have some goals. If you are new to this channel, my name is Ilya Marchenko and I'm a professional tennis player. Part-time and full-time your favorite tennis youtuber of course. But enough bullshit, let's talk about my season. Let's take a look at raw numbers first. I started the year with a ranking of 215. My ranking today is 163. I played a total of 65 matches and won 37 of those, which is roughly 57%. One challenger title, no finals, played all four Grand Slam qualifications. Unfortunately, no main draws, but six appearances at the ATP main draws. And that qualified me for the ATP Pinch. Now I have a total of 4 years. At the age of 33 you start to think about such things, you know. But these were raw numbers, let's go a bit into details. As you remember from my preseason video series, I've done quite a good amount of work and was ready to compete. But unfortunately my knee has failed me, an Australian Open result was rather disappointing. But my work didn't disappear without a trace. One injection of hyaluronic acid to my knee and I started to show some decent results. Four wins in Kimper and then this whole Biela thing, you know, winning a tournament, two semis and one quarters. And one of the most memorable wins of my entire career. I mean Andy Murray, of course. It deserves a whole separate video about it. Oh, wait a minute. I have one. On top of that, I beat other good players like Luka Pui, Kamil Majchak and Martin Klijan. In between these Biela challengers, I brought two points to our national team against Israel. I think it was the best part of the season. And I'm sure it was like that thanks to good and thoughtful preseason. Although after many weeks and matches in a row I was pretty exhausted physically and mentally, I was still excited to see what the rest of the season would bring me. But then this happened. Five tournaments on clay, four first rounds and a very difficult time on and off the court. I think I made a mistake there, which I'll try to avoid the next year. I played way too many tournaments on clay. Not many matches, true, but still too many weeks. The road itself always take a lot of energy from me, especially without a mirror. I should probably focus more on my fitness again and prepare myself for the upcoming grass and hardcore tournaments. It's my conclusion right now, at the end of the year, when I look back at it from a distance. Maybe it was a good idea to skip the whole clay court season, even the Grand Slam in Paris. But unfortunately, players of my ranking and level normally cannot afford to miss it because of obvious financial reasons. And to be honest, this year's Rangaros was rather successful for me. I haven't qualified, but I won two matches on clay before I was completely declassified by Botic van de Zatschup. But still, two matches at the tournament which I wish never existed. I would uh, vote for that and I would put grass everywhere. Looking ahead, it turned out that this was my best result from all four Grand Slams this season. Not too bad. Thanks, Noah. Anyway, all in all, kinda expected results this part of the year. And now I could finally focus on the normal surfaces. I switched to grass as soon as I could. Even the challenger in my hometown couldn't convince me to stay any more weeks on dirt. Grass court season is short though. I was able to play only 4 weeks in total and anything can happen on this unpredictable surface. So it brought me first ATP main draw since 2016. I qualified in Queens and got in directly into the main draw of Newport ATP a couple of weeks later. Do you think the grass should be green? <laughs> Although it was pretty historical achievement for me, overall performance during those weeks was average. I won some matches, I lost some matches. I tried really, really hard though. I tried behind the back shots, no look shots, but unfortunately that wasn't enough to make it to the highlights of tennis TV. Life is so unfair. But let's continue reviewing my season. I decided not to go to the Olympics in Japan, about the reasons I was talking in my other video, although I said there that I didn't qualify for it, eventually I did, but still decided not to go and play some ATPs in North America instead. Still pretty sure it was the right choice. I even made another injection to my knee to be prepared better. But not everything went as planned. A very long and tight match in Los Cabos against Taylor Fritz, young talented American. I saved 6 match points, finally made to the highlights of tennis TV with this point, but eventually still lost that match 7-5 in the third. And unfortunately that was not the only loss I had that night. My knee has failed me again. It wasn't bothering me during the match, so it's not an excuse or something, but it got pretty big after that. Very big. That was a sad story. 
That was a critical spot of the whole season. It was never the same after that night. Some weeks were better than the others, but since then it was an ongoing battle. In Washington I thought I would have to withdraw after every single match. But physios out there were able to perform some miracles every single time. So I was able to go through the qualies, beating none other than Dr. Eva himself. And even had a match point against Giron. But that motherfucker fought till the end and not without help of cramps in my legs, beat me 7-6 in the third. After that I had a short trip to Canada to pick up my free Nintendo Switch and took some rest before the last Grand Slam of the year, US Open. I didn't go back home as my knee doesn't like long flights. I really don't like them. So I stayed a couple of weeks in Delray Beach in my friend's house instead. But what about FIFA? I'm a best player with FIFA. In this room, right? At, at least in this room. <laughs> so after a couple of weeks I was well rested but still wasn't 100% fit. US Open was total madness. I won the first round from a couple of match points and then lost the second round from a match point as well. Games and match Bajanko. Intense days. I guess you have a pretty logical question at this point. Why was I continuing to play if I wasn't 100% fit? Well, let me explain. I kinda knew what's happening with my knee and after my American trip went straight to Vienna to make another MRI and check with my doctor. And this is the dialogue we had. Uh, well, I can see you are using your knee quite hard. Uh, yeah, kinda. The matches uh, that are less than two and a half hours it doesn't count to my activity uh, for some reason. Yeah, how long are you going to play, you said? I don't know, two, three, four, maybe even longer. I want to play as long as I can. Uh, is it months or weeks? Years? Oh, uh, well, then I can only suggest you to accept pain and swelling, because if you make a surgery right now, you will most likely finish your professional career. For example, Andy Murray is already doing miracles with his hip, but even he loses to some random YouTubers here and there. With the knee, it's even more impossible. Okay, but when you finish with this uh, tennis, call me because you definitely need a surgery. Your knee is fucked. Inspired by doctor's advice, I went to another doctor, this time in Bratislava, and our talk was pretty similar. But he suggested to try another injection this time, to help me with my acceptance. This time it was something similar to PRP, but 5 times more expensive. After that I wasn't able to play tennis for a week. So with only 2 days of tennis, I went to another trip. I had to use all my chances to play ATPs. Those chances are everywhere. Because my goal was to qualify for that ATP pension. And now we know, I've accomplished it. Two times I passed the qualies and even the first round. And two times in a row I was stopped by John Millman. It's yeah. fucked, my jaw's fucked. Oh, did I mention that I beat number 36 in the world, a big star from Kazakhstan and a master of trick shots, Alexander Bublik, in one of those? Well, now I just did. The last ATP on my schedule this year I wasn't able to play. Not because of my knee or other injury, I just didn't get into the qualies. My next destinations were Bergamo, Bratislava, Helsinki and Davis Cup in Oslo. And I think that planning was the biggest mistake of the whole season. First, I shouldn't go to Bergamo. It wasn't enough rest and preparation. Sure, I got a nice picture and a souvenir from Malinowski and passed one round, but I killed my knee. I was barely walking after the tournament and wasn't planning to play Bratislava. But another injection of hyaluronic acid and I made another mistake. I played a match against Brody and didn't stand a chance. Eventually I cancelled Helsinki, but it was kinda too late. I tried to prepare the best I could for our Davis Cup tie against Norway, but the damage was done. And although I played and felt myself good during practices in Oslo, as you can see from my score against Durasovic, I wasn't able to perform at my best. There was my last match of this 2021 season. As usual, it was full of ups and downs, but still one of the best my years on tour. I achieved some goals and failed some. So it's time to set up some new ones. First, I need to get back to tennis. As I'm not really resting right now, I'm not allowed to play. I can barely walk to be honest. I'm recovering after stem cells injection. Again, this injection was more expensive and I can't play tennis after for a longer period. I start to think that the price is somehow linked to the resting times afterwards. Interesting. Second, I need to force myself to play less. 
it's very important to rest properly and have more time to prepare better, especially at my age. And third, as usual, I still dream to come back to top 100, to play all Grand Slam main draws and all that crap. 